So in, in the first video I talked about the sum path as as a geometry basically like any presentation and how, how you can draw it what are the inputs that you have and here you get two different types of inputs for, for the sun locations and like how you can use the vectors in these outputs to, to have a better visualization and customize it uh, but let me disable this uh, what I'm going to talk about it right now is the other inputs that you have here which which is sort of unique and I think they, they are really useful these two inputs so let's just start like this um, you what do you use some paths for what's the main use of some path so the main use of some paths as we said is you, you want to know where the sun is but why does it matter because the sun is the source of light and radiation so why does that matter because basically you want to know where the sun is when you need it and where the sun is when you don't need it and you want to protect it so as you can see it comes from another information so what does it mean when I say when you need the sun or when when is the time that you don't need the sun there are different ways of, of finding that time and there are different methodologies. There is a really good paper about it. I will put the paper as a link in the description of this video in, on the YouTube. Uh, I, I won't have time to, to talk about all the methodologies, but like, as you know, it's always about something. Like, sometimes you use only a day, but many times it's just like you say, okay, when the temperature is more than 18 and the, the radiation, like the global radiation that I get, is uh, more than like something like 630 so how, how can I apply that so in a normal way you, you have to go and get the dry bulb temperature find what are the hours that's happening and then get the global horizontal uh, radiation that you have and find the hours that you get the radiation more than uh, I said 630 and then when you found them you, you should on the location you should find the vectors and use that vectors to design a shading for example so these inputs tr are trying to 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 bridge this gap bet between the information so you don't really need to go here and find the hours separately you can just connect I mean if I take like the global horizontal radiation and just bring it here and connect it to the annual hourly data input so something happened right so what happened was uh, the the component start reading the data and then plot the data on top of the sun so 21st of December the amount of radiation is 173 and if I do multiple days I don't know why I delete everything. Oops. Avers. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Now you see I get it for every single sound that I have. So it's a service 6 in the morning it goes to 45 interesting 97 146 173 and it goes down oh in the afternoon it gets to 200 and then it goes back so now I have the data on top of the sun pass which is I think interesting and if I use this guy like I, I can get it for the whole year for example or I can get it for multiple months so I mean, it doesn't matter, it overrides that, but I just removed it. And let's change, change the scale of the sun again. So as you see, it gives you a really good understanding of what's really happening 
for the sun during different months based on this data like when is the time that you get the most radiation and you want if you want to see multiple things like you you can just connect dry bulb temperature too so it's calculating so it it just does add a new sum pass and it has the new data plotted on top of that so here I get the sum pass with the temperature for Chicago and you can see the range between minus 20 and 31 changing here between 0 and 964 changing for the radiation and similar to other ladybug component you can customize this presentation using the legend parameter here so I can make this thing to, to be star well it doesn't make sense to start at zero but uh, I can change you for example you can change the custom color set so. mm. I don't want this what I want is this one so let's do the red one so I can connect it here as custom colors and then oh, I need a series of colors so I just generate the colors and I connect it here okay so now the color set is all in red or pink sort of between these two in a different presentation if you want to use it but again it's still like okay what so so I get the data on top of this thing plotted interesting but now I want to make a decision for example I want to say show me the Sun when, when the radiation is more than 630 and, and, and the temperature is more than 18 how, how can I do that as I said the one way is to, to use this data go here use this separator let me get a little bit of a space here oh this two should move and then get the temperature for example and I say uh, larger than like 18 and I connect it here and then it gives me false through false through false through I can use this patch you know it's just like so much work so then then use this patch then you find the average then you should change the average to the date then you can use it to connect it here to get the sum positions but what if you can just write something here and which does all this thing for you and this is why you have the conditional statement here so the way conditional statement works is you can input a conditional statement like a valid conditional statement in Python and it will consider that, calculate that and apply that to the to the sum path. The way it works for now is I assigned every English letter to a series of input. What does it mean? So anything that you write here so let, let me write a conditional statement first what, what I mean something like this so I say temperature or temp is bigger than 18 and radiation is bigger than uh, 613 that's what I want right but so if, if I put it like this then then you should have a uh, kind of variable name for any of this list and I don't know which list do you want to use maybe you want to use the windows that's why I had to do this and say okay the first letter works for the first list so the first list we have here is the global horizontal radiation so it's A the second list that I have is the temperature here so after A is B 
So now I wrote b is bigger than 18 and a is bigger than 630, which is basically the time that, I mean, there are different ways, as I said, but like one of the ways to say, oh, you need shading or sh shading can help. And as soon as I connect it here, the component is going to read, read it like this. A, oh, A is the first list. What is the first list connected? Global horizontal radiation. So the global horizontal radiation is dot the, 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 the times that global horizontal radiation is more than 630 and temperature is bigger than 18. So I just connected it. And it calculated that. So, oh, these are the sun positions that has that. And it gives you a report here too. It says, oh, this is the conditional selection applied. This is this is what you asked for. Dry bulb being more than 18 and global horizontal uh, radiation more than 630, which is going to be 132 hours. You tried for like 1,892 hours, which is 6.98% of the time that you asked for. And this is because I asked for, for this time. So if I ask for the whole year, if I get this and this, now I can see like when is the time that the shading is help has helping me in Chicago and how many hours is that? like so fast and, and you can change it say oh like it's so many or I don't want this part or I don't know so you, you can just turn on the information here turn the preview on so you can go read oh so it, here is around 657 so do I want really I, to do it during September because of this like one single hours Sorry. I'm not sure so what is the range if I want to change? So okay, it seems like seven hundred. Well, you know, you you can just play with it and and find the right thing for your design. Okay, so now I filtered seven hundred, and we have a still two or three left here. Oh, seven, like twelve. It happens, and you get some some more here. Like, but as I said, it's it's not only limited to the weather data. For example, you can run a full energy simulation and then if you get the hourly data for cooling and heating, like you can use the methodology that uh, uh, that, that you can read about it in the paper that I mentioned and I will just uh, provide the link to it. They call it shade rate, which is a relationship between heating and cooling and you can apply that if you want. You can apply any kind of hourly information which is available to you. Well, uh, the last one here is if you want to switch between daily sun pass and annual sun pass, you can just, it's a boolean, you can set it to true and false. So, and, and now that we have the sun vectors, we, we can design a shading. Like so, we found the, the right sun vectors ba based, on, based on a uh, conditional statement that, that came from the weather data this time. Uh, I'm working on this one. Hopefully it works. Uh, so what you need are the glazing surfaces to design the shading for it. So uh, we can use Honeybee to generate it but just like keep it simple for now and I just select multiple surfaces. It, it may look, just look weird but Okay, because this is going to be a whole building. <laughs> so if I select that tree and I just use the B ramps, so multiple connected as glazing surfaces, it tells me something is wrong because of none. It does okay because. It's not fully developed, so probably tells me because I, I didn't put uh, more input and it doesn't have a default input. So let's say 20 shadings. And then the depths or the sum vector, let's give the depths for now. Okay, as I said. 
preview and not to get that interesting color. Let me set the color before. Okay, so yeah, it generates the shadings, but, but now it's just based on the depths. But you can change it, and, and it's not what we want. We, we want to see what is the right shading to, to protect the building from these sum vectors because we found them as the sum vectors that should be protected so I just connect them to, to the vectors and oh, probably because of the smoothness <laughs> yeah, sorry as I said it's not fully developed so yeah I was right so it's calculating Okay, so now I got my shadings right for, for different directions, and uh, these lines that you see is because because of the smoothness. You can change the level, and you can change the level of accuracy, but uh, like it's not something that I want to cover in this video. And I should work more on the shading designers. You can add shading too. So so far so good. The third video is going to be. Uh, connecting the sun pass to sunlight ever calculator to do some shadow studies.